NFL fans discuss the top five quarterbacks in NFL history, rarely will Drew Brees' name get mentioned. Approve, not approved. Approve. Because Fair? He, uh, probably. I mean, it's it's hard to tell because the numbers are so ridiculous these days. You know, you can't... You look at the top... 10 out of the top 15 NFL quarterback seasons of all time have happened in the last five years. Matthew Stafford probably has three of them. So these numbers are so ridiculous, people are going to credit that instead of Drew Brees himself. He's 7-6 and six in career in the postseason. Uh, he has one Super Bowl, which was gigantic. It was a real big one for that town. He has 70,000 yards. He's a 67% career passer. Um, he's going to be at 500 touchdowns by about uh, November. But I, I still think it comes down to he never looked the part, so he always mm. gets cast as like, I, what, what actor would you compare him to? Where he did everything, he won everything, but people still look at him as not a star. Like a like a role player, like Paul Giamatti kind of guy? Nah, I think bigger than Giamatti. I don't know. Mm. I, I don't even know who I'm comparing it to, but I always think Drew Brees doesn't get the full appreciation. Well, he's a second. You know, he. I think he was top of the second round, right? That's definitely a part of it. Yes, too. that hurts. Yeah, but still, though, you can't. What do you do with today's numbers, Paul? Like, you, you really like. You know, but somebody Brees, has to have somebody has to have the best of these great numbers. And yeah, but never, no, but they're all in the next last ten years. Favre had it, then Manning had it, then Brees had it, then Stafford, and all the, the his generation of guys will pass it. So they lose all meaning because they change the rules to make it so easy to pass for five thousand yards. Look you, how many five thousand yard seasons we've had in the last ten years. Do you have a personal favorite quarterback ability? Not stats, not rankings. Just where you think that guy's the best football player at the quarterback position I've ever seen. Do you have that person, or is it a few people? Ah, well, yeah, I, I think Aaron Rodgers is the most talented I can remember. But I don't know because I might be having some recency bias there. Elway, Aaron Rodgers, Marino, ah, oh, man, Favre in the late 90s when the rules eh. weren't I I don't know. No, it does. I, I guess I don't have an answer, although Aaron Rodgers is pretty close to my answer. I think I would go Aaron Rodgers and Joe Montana at his peak. Those guys made the position look easy. They looked like they were having a good time out there. See, Joe Montana, I didn't see it. <laughs> Honestly, I know I know he's great, but he didn't have the highlight throws like Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers will whip at 60 yards downfield. Oh, sure. He never had that kind of strength, but I think yeah. Joe had the kind of aim where he could put it on a guy running in full stride. I, I, I think it's – this is really deep, deep football stuff. He put Jim Jerry Rice in position to catch the ball running across yeah. the middle to pick up yards in stride so many times where he didn't have to stop and catch and turn to get yak yards after the catch. I'll bet Jerry Rice – if you do yards after the catch, he's going to be the, obviously the lead linger all time. But the way Montana put the ball on his on his receivers, they didn't have to work that hard for it. Right, but that's why the highlights aren't great. They're eight yard passes. Sure, that's, that's what I mean. It's not like where Aaron Rodgers goes well, and against that's his what body I mean. and whips I, at forty yards. Yeah, uh, Joe made the game look easy and effortless. Uh, and I think it's like Joe Montana on, on steroids, figuratively, not literally, is Aaron Rodgers. The thing is, though, and I know I'm going to go system, but Young came in right after Montana and did it even better in the oh, wall system. Well, because I mean, I, Young was at the top of the heap. He was I unbelievable. Think, I think Steve offense. Young is one of the more underrated football players in the history Paul, of the it's NFL. it's Bill Walsh. It's not Steve Young and Joe Montana. Right, it's but Bill I'm Walsh. Saying, yes, but what they did with his system, they maxed it out to make it just perfect where they're smoking people. And Steve Young was an unbelievable running quarterback. Really, I think because of the first eight years of his career was basically irrelevant, either in the USFL or waiting on a bench. He didn't have the broad scope of famousness. Right, but he had to get to that system. Like just like Tom Brady had to get to Belichick. You know, the guy's quarterback is all about getting to the right place. I'm sorry. I, I know people kill me for that take. But that Niners team, it, it's so, it was so perfectly constructed around Montana to fit his needs. Anyway, I don't know how we got distracted here. At least you've been approved, not approved. Bryce Harper, our, our guy watching the Nationals, has said he will compete in the home run derby if and only if he is named to the All-Star team, which he probably will be, he'll be voted in. If you're Bryce Harper, do you do the Home Run Derby this year in Washington, your hometown? Absolutely. There's no loss mm -hmm. to doing it. You get the you get the win by participating in it. You can go 0 for 100, and it'll be a real embarrassing night, but it's about putting on a show for the fans. You'll gain world, you know, nationwide pat on the back for being there for his team, for his fans, in mm -hmm. the hometown thing. This is a no-lose situation, even if he does nothing in the Home Run Derby. Now, he's had... Well, he'll he'll dominate the Home Run Derby. He's great at Home Run Derbies. But he's had a lot of trouble hitting this year. Are you are you a guy who worries about the uh, 
messing up your swing in no. the home run derby? I think that's one of those things that probably one guy said one time, and now people have just taken it as a possibility. All right, leisure approved, not approved. Bryce Harper hat backwards home run derby. Oh, that's not even a question. A thousand percent? Definitely have. Oh, of course. Of course. That I, that doesn't even count. Uh, Give me another one, Paul. All right. Uh, the best thing, leisure and approved, not approved. The best thing I've seen on TV, internet, anywhere this year is late night host Jim James Corden doing car- carpool carry with Paul McCartney of the Beatles. He went to his old hometown of Liverpool, surprised some people on the street, went to a pub, and he played like a free concert for people who were hanging out at this local pub. Um Man, I watched it four times in the past four days, and it's just perfect. A perfectly produced, whoever produced that thing, whoever put it together, they should win all kinds of awards. Paul, I can't watch it. And because everyone on Twitter told me how amazing it was. There's, I guess there's like a 23 minute clip where James Corden's crying in the car or something. Yes. I can't do it because everyone says it's so amazing. Am I making a mistake here? Because I will, I'll watch it tonight if you tell me I should. No, it, it. First of all, you must be a big Beatles fan, or else this conversation doesn't work. And a big fan well, of Paul McCartney, or this okay. conversation doesn't work. But if you didn't know it was coming, because I didn't know it was coming, all I see is carpool karaoke, James Corden and Paul McCartney. I think it's gonna be the traditional: get in the car, sing three songs, and move on with your life. They did like a half hour all day bit where mm-hmm. they went to his hometown, they went to his grade school, they went to like uh, his the, the apartment he lived in as a child, they went to a local pub and surprised some people. They like blew out the budget for this one, and it was worthy of Paul McCartney. And McCartney, my, he's a saint. I don't know how he deals with. Think about the, think what it's like to be Paul McCartney. A hundred, let's say a dozen times a day. People meet you, and it's the greatest, mo- one of the great moments of their life, and it's just another second of your life. But if I if I walked up to Paul McCartney, I don't think I'd have anything to say. I couldn't get it out of my mouth, and it would be the coolest thing ever. My sister met Paul McCartney on vacation. She said he was just crazy nice. Like where um, she, <laughs> Paul McCartney said to my sister's husband, my brother in law. So what do you do? And he told my dad, he goes, he goes, oh, and uh, Paul McCartney goes, you're not going to ask what I do? <laughs> and it was so <laughs> funny the way he said it. It wasn't cocky at all, but because everyone knows who Paul McCartney is. Yeah, no, that that does sound good. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I Please don't know. Do I'm such a cynic. I just want everybody. You're the same way. So don't say you're any better. But when everybody's in love with something, I tend to go the other way. Completely different. I'll give you one more leisure to prove not approved. We've had about three days of the Jameis Winston possibly being suspended for three games. Paul, I've kind of talked myself into the possibly giving up on him now. Is that crazy? Approved, not approved. At least you look at it. You know, I, I think the Bucks have to let this season play out because of the level of talent on their team. Yeah. And if he, if the team is 10-6 and six and gets a playoff victory and everyone plays well and he stays out of trouble, everything is cool for for a while. Everything cools down. If you cut him and have to search another 10 years for a star quarterback, it, I think that's a mistake at this juncture. True, true, but it's really is. It's been a bad week. It's for close. Him. I it's read really a lot close. of columns. Let read a lot of columns this weekend. People are not high on Jameis Winston. No, I mean, it's just there's too many incidents for for him to get the hall pass anymore. Mm-hmm. It's now if he's accused of something, you assume it's true, and you don't even really give him the benefit of the doubt. And I'm really big on giving people fair uh, wide berth until I hear all the facts. He kind of, he's kind of at this juncture lost that and it's not going to get any better. Like the next time he has a small incident, it's be a big incident. Yeah. And if you're a Bucks fan, it's hard to get excited about the team with him at quarterback because even if they win, you might not like him. So it's going to be tough. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed the Sunday night podcast. Paul, I think we had a little bit of arguments here on some things, uh, you know, the use of the English language, mm-hmm. maybe something about Mary, but we're still friends. It's okay to argue. We you didn't know, get past this. I'm proud of you. I took a shot at one of the movies that you loved, and you didn't return fire with like like a, a snide Walter Payton comment or something like that that would really <laughs> get under my skin and stay there for years on end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, did you know, by the way, I was looking at uh, my... Uh, football statistics. Do you know the 85 Bears won a Super Bowl, Paul? Because nobody from Chicago ever talks about that. I'm fine with that. Just don't mess with Walter. Don't mess with Sweetness. And you and I will have a perfect relationship. Thanks for listening to the Leisure Room Podcast. Download, subscribe, art19.com and Apple Podcasts. And don't forget the Sunday night radio show every Sunday night, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern on NBC Sports Radio. We're the Leisure Room. We're done.